hello there. My name's Hillary. I'm here for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. You might be familiar with some of my other YouTube videos where I talk about how to build aquariums and even teach you about some of the species that are in your aquariums. But this is a brand new video series. It's called Cold Water Curiosities. It's completely different than anything I've done before. Let me tell you a little bit about it. into the aquarium hobby back when I was in college working on my marine science degree. In my spare time, I would spend watching my freshwater fish tank and just observing things that go on. Over time, I noticed things I hadn't seen before. I was curious about new behaviors that I was seeing from my fish. And that's really kind of what started it all, is curiosity. Now, add some years to that and being in the field as a professional, as a hobbyist, over time you lose a little bit of the spark. And that's kind of where I've been recently. But I started a job again at a public aquarium. And while I was cleaning one of the tanks, I noticed a species I'd never seen before. And just like that, that spark of curiosity was renewed. And that's kind of how this series came to be. Since the Puget Sound is literally right in my backyard, I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to chase some of my curiosities and learn about the different species that are right here. Now, P&W Custom makes this incredible small-in-one, one-gallon glass tank, which makes it perfect to take out and set up to observe some of the species that are right here. So this video series is going to be dedicated to once a month exploring and learning about some of the local species that are right here in my backyard. Now, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the first species of 2025, and that is the acorn barnacle. Before I dive deep into telling you all about acorn barnacles, I wanted to take a minute to tell you a little bit about this P&W small-in-one, one-gallon glass tank. Now, they do have other sizes of these tanks, but this particular one, I think, is the perfect size for the observations I'm going to be doing. It's not too big that the species I'm observing gets lost, but it's large enough that it's got adequate space for filtration in the back, and it's got circulation. This means I'm going to have the peace of mind knowing the species I'm taking a look at are going to have adequate filtration and water quality while I'm spending time with them. Now, another reason I like it is because it's small enough that the pump can be powered by this solar recharging battery pack. Same thing I use when I'm traveling and I'm on a plane. It makes it perfect for on the go usage. But enough about the tank itself. Let's take a look in the glass and see some of these acorn barnacles in action. Look at all of these acorn barnacles. There were so many of them just along the rocks at this low tide line. Now, immediately when I get started, I automatically want to tell you the scientific name of this species, but I really don't feel comfortable doing that, and there's a reason for it. Scientists and researchers have identified 1,445 living types of barnacles, and of that number, 900 of those are acorn barnacles. That's quite a few different types of acorn barnacles. Now, acorn barnacles are considered to be true barnacles in that they are sessile species. Now, what this means is that they are going to attach themselves to the rockwork and they're not going to move. They're pretty much going to stay there. Now, this differs from other types of barnacles like the gooseneck barnacle that can actually move around a good bit. Okay, let me take a step back. I don't want to be misleading. Just because the adult acorn barnacles are sedentary doesn't mean that their young are. In fact, the baby acorn barnacles, when they're young, are in a larval stage that is actually free swimming. They're going to spend a little bit of time as zooplankton hanging out in the water column before they decide to settle out. Now, when they find a hard structure like a rock or a piling or the underside of a dock to settle on, they they will attach themselves head down to this structure. Now here is where things get really interesting when it comes to the acorn barnacle. I mentioned already that you can find these guys in the rocky intertidal, which means there's a lot of flux between high and low tide, and some of the time they're actually exposed. So in these rough environments, how do they stay attached? Well, 
larval barnacles have cement glands in their antenna that actually produce an unbreakable bond that you can't dissolve with any sort of acidic or basic solutions. So this is why you see their shells still attached to those hard structures long after the animal itself is gone. In fact, some of these structures can actually provide homes and hiding spaces for small fish or even a good place for other species to go ahead and lay their eggs. Now you might be seeing this and wondering what on earth is happening. Well, what you're seeing is an appendage called the Siri. This is what the acorn barnacle uses to feed. It extends that and waves it through the water column. There are small hair-like extensions on each of those fronds that allow the barnacle to pick up some of that phytoplankton that is floating through the water. They are able to consume any sort of detritus that's in the water column, and that is how they're able to eat. They curl in those arms and bring it into themselves to consume. Now, as the acorn barnacles continue to eat and feed, they'll continue to grow. Now, they're still considered a type of crustacean, and just like most crustaceans, they will molt. So occasionally, you will see these little um, organic structures floating around, and it looks like the barnacle itself has died, but in fact, it's actually just a molt. Now, as there are so many different types of acorn barnacles, it makes sense that they have a fairly decent range in their size. They can range from 0.8 inches all the way up to four inches in size. Now, when it comes to their lifespan, they can live up to 10 years. Now, this lifespan is very much dependent on where they're located, dependent on the nutrition that's available in the water column and the quality of the water. But no matter how long they live, there's a pretty high guarantee that they're going to be reproducing during the course of their lifespan. Now, acorn barnacles are considered to be hermaphrodites. They have both male and female reproductive organs, although only one at any given time. An interesting fact about acorn barnacles is that the males have the largest relative to body size, reproductive organ in the animal world, and it can be six to eight times longer than their body length. Now, when it comes time for them to reproduce, that is going to occur every year between the winter and spring. And during this reproductive season, the acorn barnacles will have between one and three broods of larvae. And in each of those broods, there can be up to 30,000 individual larvae that are released in the water column. While it might seem like up to 90,000 individual offspring is a huge number for a single barnacle to produce, consider that a good majority of them are probably being swept off by water currents, and another majority of them are likely being eaten by filter feeding predators. Barnacles are known to clog up impellers and drive shafts, and biofouling from barnacles is a huge problem. An article on Monterey Bay Aquarium's website said that in two years, a tanker ship can accumulate up to 10 tons worth of barnacles. That is a substantial amount. Since barnacles attach to hard structures, once they do attach, it can be really difficult to remove them. One of the few ways to remove them is by using chemicals. We're familiar in aquariums with using copper to treat fish, but know how dangerous it is to invertebrates. Copper-based paints are one of the ways that boats will prevent barnacles from settling out. But if you are unfortunate enough to have barnacles settle, sometimes the best methods for removal is putting a little bit of elbow grease in and scraping them off by hand. I hope you've enjoyed as we took a deep dive into the life of the acorn barnacle and learned a little bit more about this curious species. I don't know about you, but I've had so much fun spending time and observing these barnacles here in this PNW Customs small in one, one gallon tank. And I can't wait to find another species to spend some time looking at for next month. A huge shout out and thank you to PNW Customs for helping to make this series a reality. This has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.